Well, hello and welcome. Uh, if you've made it to this uh, video, I guess you're wanting to learn how to make a uh, gel plate. Uh, to start off, we just need three ingredients. You need gelatin powder, uh, you need one cup of it, uh, you need glycerin, that's 375 mils you'll need of that. Both of those items you can get from your local grocery store. And then you need some boiling water. There's a couple other items you'll need. Uh, one is a glass mixing dish. Uh, I say glass because we'll be popping it in the microwave a little bit later. You need some uh, measuring cups, uh, measuring jug, anything that you can use to measure the items. A spatula and then uh, whatever you're going to use to mold your gel plate. I prefer a baking tray just because I find it doesn't, uh, it, the nonstick works really well. What you'll see over here is I'm now pouring the glycerin into the measuring jug. Um, it's best to just try and uh, pour it down the side to alleviate any bubbles it may create. Obviously any bubbles that do appear will ruin your, your plate in the end of the day. So that's now coming up to 375 mil. You now want to get your uh, mixing bowl, whatever you're going to use to mix, and you want to pour it in again, just at an angle over there, just to try not splash it around. Next up, uh, you'll need to get your um, gelatin powder. That's one cup of gelatin powder is all you need. Uh, this brand worked really well, um, but as you can see by the color of the powder, it's, it's a little bit yellow. And the final gel plate ends up having a little bit of a yellow tint to it. And I'm not sure if that's due to the color of, of the gelatin over here or not. So my next one that I will make, I'll try and use one of the other brands just to see if I can get a more clear final product. It's now time to, uh, to mix the gelatin powder in with the glycerin. This is a bit of a time consuming process over here. It's obviously not the easiest substance to mix together, but just put it in gradually like I'm doing over here and slowly stir it in. You notice a lot of clumps forming. As you go through, you can just squash them against the edge of the bowl just to make sure that everything is mixed in properly. You can see over here I'm doing, I'm doing just that pushing it up against the bowl, making sure that everything is nice and mixed in nice and smooth. Now it's time for your boiling water. So you'll need one and a half cups of the boiling water. Once you pop it in over there, you'll notice that it actually doesn't mix in properly with the gelatin and glycerin mixture. So what you have to do is just mix that water that is sitting at the top of the mixture right now, slowly but surely mix it all the way through and it, it, it eventually combines. So what I do now from this mixture over here is I've taken, I take it off screen into the microwave and I zap it for 30 seconds, bring it out, mix it around for 30 seconds, uh, and then repeat that four times. Now it's pouring time. So there's nothing on the tray here. You literally just pour it on. And because it's got non-stick already, it should work perfectly fine. Now there's a couple of bubbles that you can see over there in the top right hand where the light is. And what you do is you take a piece of paper and you just gently scrape them all off and try and pick up as many as you can. And one other trick that I got from uh, paint pouring uh, artworks that I used to create was you can also take a blowtorch to the surface. Don't hold it too long because you don't want to burn anything, but any bubbles that are there will pop. 
from here you now let it set for about two hours you just leave it don't touch anything make sure the surface is flat and isn't disturbed and then after the two hours you take it away and it will be firm you pop it in the refrigerator i left it overnight uh, but the result is pretty outstanding you can see over here how easily it pulls away from the baking tray it's probably about the same thickness as a commercial jelly plate um, it's just a little bit softer but overall i was pretty amazed with uh, with the outcome you can see the edge where i scooped up it has a little bit of thin um, fragments on the side over there you can just use a uh, a um, knife just to cut that off and then you've got a perfectly shaped gel plate and made. Now I did one test uh, with this test print to see if it actually worked. I'm gonna have to try and uh, work this out just a little bit of trial and error as always. Um, as an example over here, I didn't know how much paint it actually needed. It, it felt like it needed a little bit more than the commercial um, gel plates. Not only the size of it, but it, it kind of felt like it, absor it absorbed a little bit quicker than, um, than usual, or allowed it to dry rather. Um, I didn't have access to an A3 printer at this point over here, so I, I have stitched two A4s together. And you can see over here, it works. It came out pretty good. There are a few areas with a lot of detail. Uh, the left-hand side over there, there's excess black paint. Um, that's either because I didn't rub it down long enough or I had too much there, I'm not too sure. Uh, but overall, the outcome I'm pretty happy with. Um, so for this example over here, I just thought I'd try a little bit of reverse painting. Um, this is a blown up version of one of the other artworks that I've created on the smaller, um, uh, I think a 10 by 12 uh, plate that I've got. So this was blown up. Um, but overall, it, it works as it should. Here we go, using some Liquitex uh, gel matte medium over here. Uh, if, you're, if you're unfamiliar with it, you can put this down once your paint is dry. And give a nice thin layer and it'll dry transparent. But what it does over here is while it's still wet over there, you, you put down a piece of paper you weigh it down and I think I left this one for probably about 10 or 15 minutes to, to dry. And then what the gel medium does is it actually helps adhere the paint to the paper as opposed to the gel plate. And you can see over here it is coming off. Overall, pretty happy. Um, it came out a lot glossier than uh, my other plates. I haven't worked out yet if that is due to residue on the actual um, gel or not, but uh, time will tell. Cleaning wise, it was pretty easy. I just used some damp, a damp paper towel and uh, rubbed it across the, the surface and it cleaned up quite nicely. And these over here are just a few final shots over here, just showing you the detail that it has produced. So overall, I'm quite happy. Leave a comment below if you attempted this or if you're planning on attempting it uh, or if you've just got any other questions. I'm always happy to help. Thanks for watching.